This is also very important theorem on the compact matrix cases that states that if f is continuous mapping of a compact matrix space x into rk, then fx is closed and bounded. And also we have to show that f itself is bounded, right? So here the compact matrix space x is given to us and also the Euclidean space rk is given to us, which is very important here. And we have to show that fx is closed and bounded first. This is the Henry Borel theorem which I'm going to use in the proof that states for a subset S of a Euclidean space Rn, S is compact if and only if S is closed and bounded. Now we have to prove that fx is closed and bounded. If I show that fx is compact in Rk, then our proof is done by using the Henry Borel theorem, right? So it states that S is compact if and only if S is closed and bounded. If S is compact, that implies that S is closed and bounded. And other way also, if S is closed and bounded, then that implies S is compact, provided S should be the subset of Euclidean space Rn. In our proof, it is Rk, right? Let's start with the proof. This is your set Fx, and we have to show that Fx is closed and bounded. For that, it is enough to show that Fx is compact. Now, for the fx to be a compact set, it must have a finite subcover, right? So, we have to show that fx has a finite subcover. So, let's consider an open cover of fx and let's say that is V alpha, which we have considered in the previous theorem. The proof is similar to that of the previous theorem, right? Okay. So, let V alpha be the open cover of fx. And by the definition of the open cover, this fx then is a subset of union of V alpha, right? Now we also have a remark written over here that if A is a subset of x, then f inverse f of A contains A. So let me replace this A with x, as x is also the subset of x, right? So if I replace this A with x, I get from here that f inverse f of x contains x. Let me write this the other way. That x is a subset of f inverse f of x. Right? Okay. Because fx is a subset of union of this v alpha, I can write this further as this is further the subset of f inverse union of v alpha which can be further written as union of f inverse v alpha so this implies x is a subset of union of f inverse v alpha now because x is a compact matrix space our mapping f is on the compact matrix space x right x is a compact matrix space and it is a subset of unions of f inverse v alpha then this f inverse v alpha then becomes the open cover of x right so because x is a compact matrix space and this f inverse v alpha becomes the open cover of x and because x is compact matrix space its finite subcover also exists. So therefore, there exist finitely many indices say alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 up to alpha n such that this x is a subset of yes, f inverse v alpha 1 union f inverse v alpha 2 union so on f inverse v alpha n which can be further written as f inverse v alpha 1 union v alpha 2 union up to so on v alpha n because of the property that 
if b1 is a subset of y and b2 is a subset of y then f inverse b1 union b2 is equal to f inverse b1 union f inverse b2 this result i have used over here so this implies x is a subset of f inverse v alpha 1 union v alpha 2 union up to so on v alpha n so from here we can also write that f of x is a subset of f of all right f inverse v alpha 1 union v alpha 2 union so on up to v alpha n right okay the another remark is if b is a subset of y then f of f inverse b is a subset of b right if you consider this to be as your complete b then this further becomes a subset of b that is v alpha 1 union v alpha 2 up to so on union v alpha n right so this implies f of x is a subset of v alpha 1 union v alpha 2 union so on up to v alpha n this shows the existence of the finite subcover of fx right so with the existence of this finite subcover of fx we say that fx is compact set so this implies f of x is compact set in rk And in our case, every compact set is closed and bounded by henne borel theorem. So hence, by henne borel theorem, f of x is closed and bounded in our case. Right? Okay, so we have shown this first result. Second, what we have to show that F itself is bounded, right? Now, since Fx is bounded in Rk, since F of X is bounded, so therefore, there exists a real number M such that mod of f of x is less than equal to m for all x belonging to the metric space x which is compact one right so when this result is true for all the x belonging to the metric space x then we say that f is bounded f itself is bounded so here the second result is also proved right so hence from 1 and 2 we say that fx is closed and bounded and also f is bounded right thank you